like it never worried about how we were going to bury him, how we were going to put clothes on. Oh, so friends came together and said, you know what? We're going to find his clothes to be buried in today. Thank you. Come on. He's a keeper. <laughs> she told the funeral director, I don't know what it's going to look like because I don't even know what the injury of the wounds were like. Don't call me, call my sister, tell her what it looks like. And the director ended up calling and saying, uh, everything looks good, perfectly okay. But come to find out, he had been shot in the head. Mm. And when a full moon entered and exited, his face should have been just completely destroyed. You probably don't recognize him. But he's a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> Two weeks later, she received a phone call from a job and said, you know what? We hate to inform you of this, but when he turned 21, he was no longer even covered under the insurance. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to pay for the whole funeral service. We're going to see him somewhere. Kind of lay back and relax and get yourself together. He's a keeper. Yeah. So no, no one's story is going to be the same in the beginning or the end. And I never want to question God asking why me or why my son. I never wanted revenge on the person that was accused of killing my son. And he was caught. And, and, and he's waiting for trial. But all I know is that while my family and friends are looking at me like, how can you not feel a certain way and keep on going even after his death, I had no problem saying it's Jesus. Yeah. And all I know and have ever known, in the midst of all of this, of everything I went through, if he did it for me, he'll surely do it for you. Yeah. She's got a little brother, unfortunately, who's doing prison time, eight years, for committing a violent act. And their sister's name is Erica Hughes. So the Compassion Walk is not just about totally victims of tragedy, but it's about families who are suffering loss from incarcerations. Because if we don't fight both sides of the issue, I don't see how we're going to win this. I'm close with this. I tell brothers all the time, and when people ask me in other communities, how is this problem going to kind of quell itself? It's pretty simple for me. The co-creators of God, which is the female, there's no doubt in my mind, they nurture both boys and girls. They're the first nurturers of life. If we follow them, the creator will allow us to absorb the energy they have to give to us to change this thing and turn it. That's where the mother's cry begins. The mother's cry begins when that baby takes that first fall and they take those first steps and they get that first boo-boo. That's when a mother's cry truly begins. A mother's cry is a, jo a cry of joy that she sees as that baby takes those first steps, as that baby learns those first words. As that baby starts that first, oh, that first day of school, that's the day that mothers all cry, that first day of school. A mother's cry is that first graduation from kindergarten and preschool. Uh, that's a mother's cry. A mother's cry is that cry when she sees that baby that she's built these walls up all around all her life and she's been the protector. She's been that mother lion that she's been protecting that child from this world. And when that child goes out and gets their independence and all those bricks and that wall that she's built up around that child begin to be taken down little by little in a day what took us all their life to begin. That's a mother's cry. A mother's cry begins when that child gets a little bit older and they start to step out into the world. And all those sweet nothing that a mother puts in that child's ear are torn down by the adversary. That's when a mother's cry begins. A mother's cry is when that child straightens up and begins to fly right. And you just say, thank you, Jesus. Everything's going to be all right. That's when a mother.
Even if I die.